Yo, what up, what up, what up, and welcome back to p Noid News. Man, listen, all right, um, I gotta get my kids this weekend, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know what I mean? We're gonna have some fun, enjoy ourselves, do what we do. But I want to drop a video for you before they show up, you know what I mean? And uh, put some content out, you know, make sure, like, you know, the channel stays on and popping, you know what I mean? Because, you know, if you don't drop regular content on YouTube, Stops handing out notifications to everybody because, you know, they're a bunch of bitch-made motherfuckers. Like, it is what it is. It's how the algorithm works. But today, the guy who I've been bringing a lot to y'all, right? Uh, you know I mean? Uh, my boy Curtis Yarvin, you know what I'm saying? A.K.A. Mencius Molebug, who I thoroughly enjoy um, his breakdown of how our political system works in America is somebody who I think that is worth listening to because you know it gives you an opportunity to understand things in a different light than what is being understood right now and i enjoy how do i put this man i enjoy political masturbation as far as things is concerned you know i mean like the the practice of going hey man like you know we could have this a different way or if we were going to set this up in a different way you know, I mean, this is how he would do it. You know what I mean? This type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, you know, having the opportunity to step completely outside of the box and not only that, be able to understand who it is is doing what to us as far as things is really concerned. But there's people on our side of the spectrum who, I'll be honest with you, I can't fucking stand. All right. And this dude... You know what I'm saying? Lex Friedman happens to be one of them. I like Michael Malice a lot. You know what I mean? I like his mentality. He's a highly intelligent individual. But, you know what I mean? Like, some of the dudes he is, some of the dudes he runs around with, you know what I mean, are just awful human beings. <laughs> right, let, let's, let's get into this. I think this is a really good example of a difficult figure that's controversial that people bring up to me a lot, and you interviewed twice, which is Curtis Yarvin. Yeah, Mencius Smallbug. Mencius Small, aka Mencius Smallbug, which is his pseudonym that he goes yeah, by yeah. His, his, his blog. Can you tell me about who he is? Sure. Why is he interesting? What of his ideas are interesting? Well, he, briefly, he invented the concept of the red pill. So, Curtis Yar Mencius Smallbug had a blog called Unqualified Reservations. You can still find it online. It's very verbose. He writes at length, very, very bright. Um, his perspective is very heretical. So a lot of things that we take for granted in our liberal democracy, uh, he regards as not only incorrect, which is downright absurd, and does not he does not take what many people view as the basis of American political discourse as the basis for his thought. So when you're starting with someone who is basically repudiating uh, kind of the Western worldview, or not the Western worldview, like the American milieu, uh, a lot of people are going to, of course, regard him as dangerous or uh, someone who is verboten. Um, he's a very bright person. Um, Why is he such a toxic figure? Because if you are blue-pilled, if you are the guardians of what is acceptable discourse, then you have to make sure your forts are secured and that any figure outside of this acceptable discourse has to be marginalized and regarded as radioactive as possible. You don't want to let in these kind of uh, um, ideas that would be destructive to your hegemony. Well, so let's dig into it. So like he, I've read a few things by him, but then I hear that in a, in a bunch of places, him being called a racist, a white supremacist, yeah. neo-fascist, so on. I go to his Wikipedia. And you see that fucking smile on his face right there as he says that shit, right? Legitimately, like this, this smile on this little smug-ass motherfucker's face. Legit, he knows exactly what he's doing because he knows Wikipedia is bullshit. He knows Wikipedia, you know what I mean? When... It has good information if you want to look up stuff about science or geography, you know, or if you want to know, like, certain, you know what I mean, statistical actual facts, you know what I mean, that you just flat can't fucking lie about, 
You know, I mean, Wikipedia is a great resource for these type of things. You know, if like, you know, you want to go, and what the fuck does a seahorse look like? Or whatever it is, you know, some, something very, very basic and something very concrete. You know, I mean, as far as that type of thing is concerned. Wikipedia is an amazing resource for these type of things, right? But when it comes down to opinions on what an individual is, you know, like such as the views on race, right? This little motherfucker here, right, who, by the way, like, yo, his podcast is, is he trying to do an ASMR thing? Is that what the fuck he's trying to do? I'm not real sure, right? He knows what type of gatekeeping bullshit this is, legitimately, you know what I mean? And I fucking, like, it's, it's just, it's so fucking underhanded and such a piece of shit thing to do, you know what I mean? Legitimately. Like, I don't know why it is that more motherfuckers don't call him out about his fucking dumb shit with this little fu- with this little fucking smirking ass, you know I mean, sucking the fucking dick and licking the boot to the powers that be, you know I mean? Like, I don't, I don't fucking get it. Yeah, there's a view on race section. Let me, let me read it. Okay. Yarvin's opinions have been described as racist, with his writings interpreted as supportive of slavery including the belief that whites have higher IQs than blacks for genetic reasons. Yarvin himself maintains that he's not a racist because while he doubts that, quote, all races are equally smart, the notion, quote, that people who score higher on IQ tests are in some sense superior human beings is, quote, creepy. He also disputes being an outspoken advocate for slavery, though he has argued that some races are more suited for slavery than others, quote, it should be obvious that although I'm not a white supre- white nationalist, I am not exactly allergic to the stuff. Yarvin wrote in a post that linked approvingly of, I don't know these people, Steve Saylor. Steve Saylor, yeah. He's from, Jared yeah, Taylor and yeah. other racialists. Yeah. So. Other racialists. Yo, look, man, seriously. Like, I don't understand why it is that. The problem is, is that. This new generation has been brought up to just suck the cock of science and academia as a whole, as their God, right? I mean, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they they robbed you of your religion. They robbed you of your culture. They robbed you of your heritage. They robbed you of your father, right? And they replaced it with this belief in academia. And this dude here is the prototypical incel from college, right? This is the academic prototypical fucking incel in the end of the day. And guys like him get their cock sucked. And his belief in things like Elon Musk and, you know what I'm saying, leaving the earth and being part of like some fucking moon glue fucking colony somewhere, living on Mars, whatever dumb bullshit that you fucking stupid fucking Generation Z cocksuckers believe. You know what I mean? <sighs> I don't, it's wrong. You know what I mean? The end of the day, like, yo, it's fucking wrong. Your belief in humankind has been fucking robbed of you through years and years of academia and the media just fucking bombarding you with garbage and, you know I mean? Your education being bombarded with garbage and you being told how much of a piece of shit you are. Believe me, you're not. All right? And to stand here and like, you know what I mean? To defend, you know what I'm saying? Curtis Yarvin, as far as stuff's concerned, like, yeah, there's, you know what I mean? Populations with lower IQ than others, you know, and there's a reason why like, you know, certain countries don't do as well as others in the world as a whole. There's a reason why Africa hasn't created a single piece of technology since shit, Egypt, you know what I mean? <laughs> in the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like, yo, it's because, you know what I'm saying? They're lower IQ individuals. Like, it is what it is. You know what I mean? And we don't expect them to become better. And unless you call them out and stand here and go, hey, look, you know, you need to become better individuals. You need to build yourselves up better. You need to stand here and select for individuals who are smarter instead of selecting for individuals who look better or dress nicer. You know what I mean? Like, this shit's going to continue. Like, that's how that operates. But let's keep rocking. Okay. So, like, one of my questions is... is Let me just say one sentence. In the same way that you had, you mentioned that guy earlier who was defending some aspects of communism, 
And that is, in some context, acceptable. When you think about it, it's like, this should be radioactive. Right. The fact that he is engaging with these ideas uh, in anything other than this has to be repudiated at all costs is what renders him to a large extent a racist. That's really interesting. So there are some topics you can be nuanced nuanced, and some not. And communism is still a topic that you can be nuanced about. Right. It's difficult, but you can be uh, race and this like talking about slavery and IQ differences based on race is a topic that I guess is radioactive to a degree where you can't even say anything, even if it's like nuanced or not even like making a point. It's like touching it as, right. as you make another point. And understandably, because you can understand that I'm going to steel man the, the, their point because you can understand the point. It's like you're just talking about Hitler. Once this foot gets in the door that some people are inherently slaves or some people are inherently better than others, it really quickly, you know, collapses. So that would be their perspective. But that's what, like, if I were to give criticism of his... But let me just say one more yeah. thing. Racist is also used to describe Alex Jones. Alex doesn't talk about race. Racist is a shorthand for a certain percentage of the population to let you know do not bother investigating this person any further. Yeah, They're so off limits. Uh, definitely. Racism and sexism is a thing that's now used to shut down conversation that's quite absurd uh, by, by a small percent of the population. But Jared Taylor and Steve Saylor, Jared Taylor interviewed him for my book. He would be regarded in any sense as a racist. What's the difference between racist and racialist? So racialists, I mean, this is splitting hairs and now I'm going to be all radioactive. Jared Taylor runs something called Amren. And this is, I mean, his perspective is that there are inherent differences between the races and you cannot live side by side. Uh, um, well, whites and blacks yeah. should not be living uh, side by and side. And by the way, for people who don't know, this is out of context. That you have uh, written a great book that includes some of these concepts called The New Right, which is not included. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's uh, this mentality among metropolitan, cosmopolitan elites where they think that they can swap babies, right? You know what I'm saying? They said, you give me 12 babies, you know what I'm saying? And I can select any one of them and give me the world that I want to have. And I can turn any of these babies, no matter what their background or their history or who they are, into a doctor or a lawyer or whatever the hell they want, right? And that's their mentality is that they think that children inherently are a blank slate altogether when they're born. And that's just not the truth, right? In the end of the day, like from a dude who, like even, like I have seven kids, right? And each of my kids intellectually, you know what I'm saying, are completely different. You know what I mean? Like, yo, I have, you know what I mean? Like one son who's really brilliant. I have another son who's really funny. I have another son, you know what I'm saying, who is more prone to acad academics and, or more prone to like uh, sports and things of this nature. You know what I mean? Who isn't that fucking bright. And then, you know, I have, you know, my my three daughters and shit, you know what I mean, who aren't, you know what I mean, like really like that intelligent and far as things is concerned compared to how, where their brothers were, you know what I'm saying, at their ages. It's just how that operates, right? Children aren't a monolith, you know what I mean? Children aren't like one way. And that's how academia and that's how the cosmopolitan people feel about things as far as shit's really concerned lose these concepts but talks Doesn't, about yeah well it's more about the growth of the com the community uh around the the, 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 the alt-right and all those kinds of the world right places. so and his point about iq it's like if you had a population the dutch right i think they're the tallest pe people on earth and if you said well the Dutch are the best people on earth. Why? Because they're the tallest. It's like you're a crazy person. So if someone is scoring low, an individual on an IQ test, that means they're somehow a lower quality person. Well, maybe in one very specific aspect. But I mean, if they're a good human being, I've got friends who are low IQ. All my friends are low IQ, frankly, compared to me. Sound like Trump there for That's a second. That's how you choose friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have any other choices. No one's yeah. going to be at my level. Well, so you're, the, you're the smartest person since Abraham Lincoln that I've, <laughs> that I've ever seen. And unlike him, I actually am honest. Yeah. So, so he <laughs> is someone who very much swims in heretical ideas. Aristotle, here's another thing. Like, if you bring up that Aristotle said that some people are born to be slaves, he wasn't speaking about race. He just meant people's souls. H.L. Mencken, who's a great um, heretic and, and uh, uh, early 20th century figure, 
uh, one of his quotes that I say all the time, which people have seen a lot in this past year, that the average man does not want to be free. He merely wants to be safe. That I think is, spe- I don't know, what, I am not familiar uh, with what Mulbug's saying about slavery because his writing is ponderous, but that certainly is something I think that is undeniable that I think more people are realizing there's a large percent of the population that is actively disinterested in freedom and the more responsibilities it entails. Well, I mean, really just the word slavery, if you want to make some kind of point or even think about the topic outside the context of this is a horrible thing that happened in the United States history. And other countries' history. It's and not other, unique to us. Yes, Let's be clear. This is, I mean, very important and there's slavery going on today and yeah. a lot of people argue that the uh, uh, sex trafficking and all those kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a, atrocities going on today that, you know, the, uh, talking about it in a way that's not immediately saying this is the most horrible thing that happened ever. You know, it's something I think about a lot is like, if I want to say something controversial, I should do so with skill, with care, and only about things I care about. Well, here's where I would disagree. I not uh, when I say things. I often say things that are controversial, or <clears throat> I will say uncontroversial things in a controversial th- way, because it's a useful mechanism to. And let me let me let me let me keep this all the way one hundred. Uh, this dude looks to Eric Weinstein, right, as a father figure, right? And Eric Weinstein is one of these guys who are like he's anti-troll. I'm probably, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I love trolling. Like, trolling is my favorite fucking thing. Like, there's a reason why, like, I keep getting booted off of Twitter constantly, right? Because, like, I am, <laughs> yo, yo, I'm really good at it, right? You know what I mean? But I'm just really bad at, you know what I mean? Not, how do I put this? You know what I'm saying? Like, not maintaining uh, proper decorum, right? I'm garbage at maintaining proper decorum. But I am amazing at trolling. Like, I legitimately just, like, yo, I got people to the point where they started banning themselves off of Twitter. It was amazing <coughs> back in the day. Ooh, excuse me, I had to sneeze. Right. And, you know, like, <laughs> these people, you know what I mean? In particular, like, these boomer academic pieces of garbage, right, who I just, like, man, listen, like, I guess they have their place. You know what I mean? In the end of the day, like, I guess they do, but you have to be a man at some point in your life and enjoy yourself being a man, right? You can't live your life just being completely serious all the time. You know what I mean? You have to have some fun in life. You know what I mean? Like, if you've never stood here and, you know what I mean, bullshitted with your friends, you know what I mean? And, like, sat there and, like, got drunk and, like, threw hands at each other and, sat here, you know what I mean, or like, you know, <sighs> threw somebody into a fucking pool or something along these type of lines and just enjoying yourself and having fun and just been destructive for no reason other than the fact you're like, I just feel like being destructive right now. You know what I mean? Like you just have fun with your life. Enjoy yourself because you only go around this bitch once. These people don't have that in them. They want to always be serious all the time about fucking everything and it's just it's a shitty way to live like it really is like being a man is just highly important and being a human being means fucking up and enjoying yourself it just is what it is alienate people you don't want around you because if there are people who are going to be shocked by certain topics like we shouldn't have ended world war ii like even as a hypothesis they just clutch their pearls they're like oh you want the holocaust to happen i can't discuss most things with you because you're not interested in having a conversation you're interested in your emotional response see i think i see things differently maybe this is a bit of a devil's advocate but what in at least the modern discourse of like twitter and social media and so on i find that if you do that you're not actually uh, removing the people that are not thoughtful and kind and so on, you're actually attracting loud people. Like a small number of them, they come over and start yelling at you. Start yelling. They're basically ruin the party by showing up and just screaming. And so all the thoughtful people leave. Well, that's why I, you have to be a very heavy. All the thoughtful people leave. Like, yo, no, that that's not true, right? And the problem is, is that 
the thoughtful people, you know, I mean, in the end of the day, like the individuals who are highly intelligent and have the ability to have these type of conversations and break shit down are the people who, you know, are going to be able to have these conversations. The individuals who are so stuck in the box and stuck with their bullshit, right? They have to have, they have to be challenged. Like, I have a little brother, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, he, uh, you know what I'm saying? He went to college and shit. He's an engineer, right? And I sit and I have conversations with him. And I body beat him to death with his bullshit, right? Because he has the academic indoctrination mindset. And that academic indoctrination mindset, it, it has to be broken. And it has to be challenged. And if it's not... You know, I mean, if like, you know, when he stood here and he said, you know, like I sat here and I said, like, we should, you know, I mean, like not let immigrants in for like the next 20 years. Right. In order to raise the wages of American earners and have the opportunity to let, you know, I mean, prices go down in the housing market, things of this nature, blah, blah, blah. And he sat here and said, you hate immigrants. When I was like, well, you hate the working class. And he goes, no, I don't. How about how, you say that? I said the same reason why you said I hate immigrants. You know what I mean? Like, yo, you think that I'm coming from a certain perspective. I can stand here and say the same thing about you. You're not being genuine. Like, that's just your way of shutting things down, and that's how you were taught to do so. That's how you were taught to think. I'm thinking outside of your box, and you need to think outside of your box as well. It's important that you hit individuals in the mouth with their nonsense. Like, I had, uh, I was arguing with McGall. Right. Me and McGaug were having a conversation one time and McGaug looks at me and he goes, he said, I didn't stand here and fight these wars because he's a veteran, whatever, in order, you know, I mean, to, in, in, to have other people's freedom taken away. Right. And I said, well, you know, what I'm saying I'm not raising these kids in order to stand here. You know, what I mean, and have individuals had their freedom and taken away. And he said, touche, my nigga, touche. And I said, yeah. You know, what I mean, can we dispense with the bullshit? You know, what I mean, and have an actual discussion. Right. You know what I mean? And that's how you do it. You have to be able to, you know what I mean, stand here and punch somebody in the mouth with their bullshit. And be able to have these conversations regardless of whether or not you're going to do it properly and whether or not you're going to be able to stand here and maintain the proper decorum. Be blocker. You have yeah. to block people on Twitter because you have to cultivate your audience and have them like a lot of times people come at me. I don't care. Then they'll start attacking members of my audience. And then I'm like, dang, I got to block them because they've won this one because I can't have that. Yeah. Now, see, I don't I don't believe in that at all. Like, you know me, man, like I'm, I'm a total free speech advocate. Like, yo, I don't want anybody to be shut up because I want the opportunity for not just me, but also for my audience to be challenged. You know what I mean? I think that's important in the end of the day, right? Because if you block individuals who are winning, right, you are not being able to stand here and challenge your own belief systems. That's important, right? Because you're never going to become smarter if you continue to, you know what I mean, let other individuals, if you take away the ability of other individuals who can win these arguments away from you, you know what I mean? Like, and that's important, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, legitimately. Like, and that's why, like, I, I really, really try never to block anybody about any bullshit unless I'm just, like, a really garbage troll. You know what I mean? Like, if they just keep repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again, and I'm just like, yo, I, I'm not, no, we're not doing this. You know what I mean? Like, dude, come up, come better. You know what I mean? And that's really where it gets down to. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I'm un necessarily provoking people feels um it's 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 you say this is beta testing you try to break the system and see what works you put as much pressure as possible this is very much computer stuff that you should be able to appreciate the point being when you have a program you're trying to intentionally sit there and, and do them as many mistakes to see what go wrong right is that not common yeah yeah practice? Exactly. yeah so you're saying that's that's a way to see communication with the world is you say something uncontroversial in a controversial way and that blocks people that or or it, does it trigger them do they roll their eyes you know what is going to be their emotional response are they going to start yelling the the problem is the, the the reason i can't think like this or i can't because i'm not sure about the points i'm trying to make 
uh, always. Like okay. I'm not always 100% sure that I'm right about things. Like, so I'm, I'm in being thoughtful, I'm afraid that I'll turn off with, with an, an eloquently phrased or even incorrect statement, I will do damage that can't be undone in terms of a good, having a good conversation about a topic. So I want to be very careful about like, I'm not saying afraid. Fear is not what I'm talking about. I think fear is is uh, like not saying something out of fear is at the core of the many of the problems of the world today. But I'm just saying, be say stuff with care. If I'm going to touch race as a topic, it feels Yo, fuck that. In the end, yo, fuck that shit. Like, legit, like, yo, fuck that shit in the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like, yo, have these conversations openly. You know what I mean? Like, legitimately. And if you say some shit that's, like, you know, way past the pale or over the point or something that's just in general wrong, like, it's other people's job to correct you. You know what I mean? Like, legitimately. And that's kind of the point. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to stand here and have the opportunity to have other people correct your bullshit, right? And acting in good faith, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's going to be bad faith actors out there, of course, and I mean, whatever, because people are fucking dumb. But acting in good faith and having these conversations, somebody will go, ah, man, I'll tell you you what, that sounds like shit. And they go, all right, well, let me put it this way, you know what I mean? Because I'm not trying to be fucking raw about it, right? And we've done this a many a times. And that's how you have these conversations. That's how you build better individuals in the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like, and that's important to be able to have that freedom to do so and surround yourself with people who are willing to do that. You know what I mean? People who are willing to challenge you on your ideologies and go, hey, man, like, what do you think about this? I mean, can you, you know what I mean, elaborate on that? Can you stand here and, you know, break this down? And you're supposed to have me, but I'm, I'm very, very fortunate on here to have motherfuckers who do challenge me and I let them challenge me. I don't stand here and, and y'all see me like T, TFM fucking has going, you, you're a mercantilist, you know, fuck, you need to go read some shit. And I did, I needed to go read some shit. And I did, you know what I mean? I sat here and I studied up on some things and started understanding exactly what it is that I was talking about because I was behind, you know what I'm saying? Like the intellectual curve as far as things were concerned. And that makes you a better man. And it's important to do these things. And I don't hold it against anybody when they correct me. Ever, 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 ever. You know what I mean? Because, like, yo, that's y'all's job is to correct me. You know what I mean? It's like you really should be deeply, first, have a point to make. Like, you really care about a point you want to make. And second, think deeply about how to say that point in a way that communicates it the best. And I thought about this, right? Legitimately, I've been thinking about this recently, right? Good art, right? Whether it's writing or painting or sculpting or, you know, acting or making whatever, right? Good art should be like children at play, right? It should be somebody who is highly skilled at something exploring. And watching them explore is a beautiful form of art, Right. Like, yo, fuck being careful. You know, I mean, they're just out there trying to figure out what they can do and reaching the limits of their abilities. That is beautiful art in the end of the day. That's what art's supposed to be. And that's what writing is supposed to be. Writing and authorship should be your brain. And your soul and what's in you having the opportunity to wander and explore the world's possibilities through your prose. That's what good authorship is. It shouldn't be like what these whiny little faggots in fucking academia say. You should be careful, right? Because they're concerned about their reputation. They're concerned with building so that they can become better. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of where the mentality gets down to that I fucking hate about these people is because they're so concerned about tomorrow rather than being worried about creating something amazing for today. And I think I'm going to leave that here. I'm Tom Pease of Pinoy News. Y'all know what it is. Like, share, and subscribe, motherfuckers. I'm going to talk to y'all later. Peace.